the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the number. Just one more time. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, hey, somebody ought to tell him thank you. Thank you, God, for one more chance. Amen. We're going to have Robert David here to come through our prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. You're a God that sees and a God that cares. And for that, Lord God, we tell you thank you. Lord God, we thank you for our laying down last night and our rising on early this morning. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to your house of worship once again. Lord, we come to tell you thank you this morning, Lord God. We come to tell you thank you, Lord God, because we see that what's going on in this world, Lord God. And Lord God, we just tell you thank you, Lord God, that we're still here, we're still your children, and that we know that you still love us, Lord God. And we love you because you first loved us. Lord God, we come to have a high time in you on this morning, Lord God. Some word, Lord God, a profound word that was liberated, set free, and made whole. Lord, bless the sick and the afflicted, Lord God, on this morning, Lord God. Wherever they are, you know who they are, name by name. Bless healthy, and healed bodies. We know that you is Jehovah Rapha. You're the God that heals. Lord God, bless mine, heal minds on this morning, Lord God. Oh, bless someone financially, spiritually, and mentally, Father God. Lord God, as our pastor stand before us, Lord God, to preach your gospel, give them a word from on high. A word, Lord God, that will comfort someone to let you know that you're still God and that you still sit on the throne and that you're still a healer. You still bless him. You still regulate and heal minds, Lord God. You still a comfort, Lord God. And that you're still our God. Lord God, have the way in this service on this morning. That your Shekana glory fall in this sanctuary, Lord God. Lord God, help us on this morning, God. Lord, you say you will supply all I need according to your riches and glory. And we know you're going to do it, Lord God. We're thankful, Lord God, to sit around the campfire revelation on this morning, Lord God. Lord God, have your way in the service on this morning. Lord, we just thank you. We just come to tell you thank you this morning, Lord God. We thank you for who you are and for who you is in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for where you brought us from, for where you're leading us, and by faith, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We know you're for ourselves. Have your way in this service this morning, God. Manifest yourself in the lives of your people. Do the miraculous in the lives of your people. And as the choir stand before us, Lord God, bless us with songs of Zion, Lord God. Lord God, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Thank God for the opportunity of being in his presence again on today as we celebrate, as we celebrate Love Weekend. Amen? I want to share this little song with you. And it simply says, Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Thank you. 
said it like you mean it. I said it like God woke you up this morning. Thank you. Good morning, my neighbor. Amen. Just before um, they come with the skit, I just want this is unprompted, so um, I want to ask Monique to come and give just a two minute takeaway from yesterday. Uh, if, if you missed yesterday, you missed the tree. And so I want her to just come and give you a two minute takeaway of what you missed so that next year you'll make plans to be in attendance. Come on, Monique. To God, all I gotta say is to God be the glory for overflow. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing us the opportunity to serve. Amen. Thank you, Mission President, for allowing us to serve as well. Our counselors, our rectors. Thank you all. Listen, ladies. <laughs> Yesterday was life changing. Life changing. If you missed it, I pray that next year you'll be able to come. That was our first time doing it, and it was overflow. Every seat over here, over there, and over there was filled up with women who are just thirsty and hungry for righteousness. And our theme was um, called to move forward. Our workshops were what's holding you back and letting go of the familiar, those traditions. It's time to move. It's time to action. We can't stand still. It's time to move. And we have to go out, out these four walls, and draw them into Christ. We can't just come in on Sunday morning and sit down. As you always say, Pastor, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And one thing I know, the daughters of destiny are ready to move. We are called to action. And this will not be the last event. So when the daughters of destiny have something, we look forward to seeing all the ladies in the house. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Martin Malcolm and 
in Mecca. What about Maya and Michelle? Or what about the people who do what's never been done before? Or invent things that we take for granted every day? What about that, baby? Huh? What about it? <laughs> what are you trying to say? That those things aren't important anymore? I'm not trying to say anything, Miss Becky, B, whoever. What I'm trying to say is black history is so much more than that. And it needs to be taught in a way, let me let you know, in a way that we can understand that the children can get the lessons that they need to get so we can know that we're black power means more than just black power. It means that we're black, we have power, and we can accomplish anything we set out to do. That's what I'm trying to say to you. So what do you think about the CRT? Asians resist the truth? Who cares? Oh, no, no, ma'am. No, Miss Knowles. You don't know everything. I mean, the critical race theory. You know, people not wanting black history taught in schools or certain topics taught that's intended, intended to harm or discomfort people? Listen, we know, we know who you are, but you know there's nothing critical about our race. My race is fat, F-A-C-T, fat, not a theory. How do, they, how do they think we feel that we have felt, and we have felt for generations? We've been wearing their tight shoes for a long time. Now that the shoe is on the other foot, they don't want to know how tight it is. Well, you really do seem to know your stuff. Thank you for your time, Miss Knowles. <laughs> And one more thing, or two. Oh yeah, we see you, Ron. Out there doing all these old dangerous things. Want to take history, black history, out of schools? How you gonna do that? We black 24 seven, 365 days here. We don't stop being black. We born black, and we gonna stand for each other. All right, back you, baby. Hey, hey, mama. Uh, taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee thou art my servant I have chosen thee and not cast thee away fear thou not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God I will strengthen thee yeah I will help thee yeah I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness the word of the Lord is blessed. Tell me what do you do when you got all the cannons? Seems like it's never enough. Hey, tell me what do you say when you're ready to away?
my Lord. Come by here. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this precious time that you loaned us on today. Where would we be had it not been for your grace and your mercy? Lord, we would still be sleeping and you not touched us with your precious finger love. Loud our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. Oh God, if you would be so pleased, be so kind, stop by here. Somebody need to touch this morning. Stop by here. Somebody need a healing on today. Pain is ravaging through their bodies. Some are suffering privately. On the outside, everything appears to be fine. But inwardly, there's a war going on. Give them peace today, oh God. Come by here. Somebody, Lord God, just needs to know that you are still God. God all by yourself. Come by here. There ever was a time that we needed you, God. We sure do need you right now. We're living in a mean and cruel world. But men and women seem to like just won't do right. Have mercy, God. We need your power manifested in this place. Have thine own way, God. For you are the potter and we are the clay. We ask this now in the strong name of our Christ. Crucified one who rolls with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to shout amen and amen. Come on, shout amen. Give me a lot of Lord one more time. Hallelujah today. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. You may be seated in the house this morning. Let me just recognize the guest of Sister Willis this morning who have joined her in the celebration of her birthday. Come on, give her some love. Come on, let's give her some love as well. Amen. I'm just delighted that they came by here. to celebrate with their loved one and we're certainly grateful for what the Lord has done. Certainly I'm, I'm always uh, amazed at the talent within my people. Amen. Lisa should have been on Broadway or something. <laughs> We had Becky, Eva, and all of them shaking this morning. It was power in the full display, not just on the on what she had in her hand, uh, but uh, she lived her character. Amen. Now, believe it or not, and I know this has happened to you if you've been black for any length of time. This has happened to you. Amen. People are literally afraid of the color of our skin. Amen. Come on in here today. I was, I went to Publix last night, had a bag in my hand on the way back to the car. And this lady had just got out of her car. And you already know the rest of the story. She got scared. Cause she saw a black man walking down the aisle. I ain't had no intentions of her. I didn't care who she was. I'm trying to get to my car, get back to my residence. 
because I, I was already late because I had plans to watch the Miami Heat and Orlando Magic, but I was late because I stopped by Publix. And so I ain't had nothing concerned about her, but she was, I, I almost, I'll let you finish the rest of that. But I just shook my head. Now mind you now, that was a white guy coming behind me. She didn't act that way when she got around him. I said, isn't that something? Now he could be the one that do something to you. And then you gonna look to me to help you out. And I'm gonna say, mm, I thought you were scared of me. But that's the world in which we live in, beloved. That's what frightens a miracle about us. But I just simply say it's because we got so much power in us. We are some of the most intelligent beings on this earth. And they are literally afraid of who you are. Not just because of your skin color, but because of what's in you. It makes them tremble. They don't know how to handle that. And it's not new. That's been going on for years. They, they don't know how to handle African Americans. They thought putting you in cages would humble you, but it just made you more powerful. They thought that hosing you down would make you hush your mouth. But you just spoke out even louder. They thought that sicking dogs on you would make you run in retreat, but you just press forward even the more. Something about you that makes others afraid of you. But if I could just borrow this from the Daughters of Destiny for a moment, you've been called to move forward. Can I get a witness in here? And so I will just simply say to us this morning, don't let up. Amen. Don't let up. Keep pressing forward. No matter how much they try to change curriculums and, and redistrict the, the, the voting lines, you know, all that has a political agenda. So they, they try to divide you and conquer you even with the voting. They try to redraw lines so that you don't have majority of power within a certain area. That's to divide and conquer you. But, you know, we don't die. We multiply. Some of us are truly baby kids. Come on in here, I had to give you a little comic relief. Amen. Amen. But we are somebody because God made us somebody. Amen. And we got to continue to be champions in the world in which we live. Don't become tired of doing what is right. Amen. That's my sermon and I'm done. I'm going to get on to the real message. <laughs> Amen. I've been caught up in that spirit of sermonettes for some reason. I don't know. <sighs> Have mercy, Lord. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Beautiful text. It's been on my heart and mind for a while. And so we thought today would be a good day to share with you from this passage of scripture. Verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. 
Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I want to talk for a few moments about the power of God. The power of God. Have you ever faced a situation that was so overwhelming and frightening that you were unsure if victory was a possibility? Or perhaps you have come face to face with a very daunting situation that you didn't think you had the needed or required resources to survive. How do we face these conditions with strength and courage? Isaiah, the 8th century prophet, is now looking forward toward difficult days for the tiny nation of Judah, Israel, has a vision of a Lord who is simultaneously an all-powerful king, yet merciful and compassionate toward fainting, weak, needy men and women just like you and me. There are really two things that I want you to understand this morning about the power of God. One is that the power of God is unique. Think about that. When we speak about the uniqueness of the power of God, we do so in terms that God can do what no one else can do. In fact, somebody decided to write a song that says, and he can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power can do. There are some witnesses here this morning that can attest to the fact that there have been some situations that you've been in that only God was the one who was able to deliver you. Some of us have been sick and doctor's report wasn't quite favorable, but God somehow or another in the midnight of our lives stepped in with a miracle of mercy and allowed us to still be shining stars in the midst of a darkened world. His power is unique. How do you describe his power is unique? No one else can be compared to God. We make a lot of comparisons, especially today. But how can you find someone of adequate resource that can compare to God? So we simply say that God's power is unique. But the second thing that I want you to understand this morning about the power of God is that the power of God is unlimited. You know we get tired. That, that is, our power is limited. We can only do so much at a certain particular time because our power runs out. Batteries in a flashlight at some point will give way. The battery in your car at some point will have to be exchanged for a new one because it has a limited amount of power. But God, 
Ben, I wish I had some witnesses with me this morning. But the power of God is not only unique, but the power of God is unlimited. That there is no limit to what God can do. What he's done for others. I'm here to tell you this morning that God will do the same for you. Because he has a unique power. It's unlimited power. The problem that we have is that we often try to compare the power of God to things in our present world. We get caught up in the technological advances of our present day and we try to, to compare God or limit God to what we are able to do scientifically. But I want to tell you this morning that the only way you can put something on a piece of glass and slide it under a microscope is because God was already there in the first place. It, it didn't just magically show up in the lab. No, God had to allow it to be first available so that you could analyze it and then break it down. But without God, you can't do that. I ain't got no help in here today. I feel like preaching this morning. I, I've been down the last couple of weeks, but today I feel all right. Can I preach for a little minute? God's power is, is unique and it's unlimited it, so that it never runs out. You can tap into it as much as you want to, but, but you'll never run the power of God out. <laughs> because His power is unlimited. And that's hard for us with our limited capacity to understand that God has unlimited power. Well, I thought about you all this morning. And, and I said, Mount Nebo is some very highly intelligent Bible scholars. They're they going to want evidence truck. They, they're not just going to take McKenzie's word. They're they, they going to need some examples. As reminders of the power of God. Come with me for a moment down biblical history lane. I have a couple of people that decided to join me on this Sunday morning. First to the witness hand is Abraham and Sarah. That they would have a son through whose offspring the world would be blessed. But there were some problems. Abraham and Sarah were getting up in age. Not only were they getting up in age, but Sarah had never given birth to a child. That further complicates the matter. Because it's one thing if you had a child and then you went on a, a, a spell where you didn't have any, that, that would be not so hard to understand. But, but when there has never been any fruit from the tree, it's hard to now fathom that that same tree giving birth to some fruits. When, when told she would be the mother of Abraham's child, a child of promise, Sarah did what we often do when God tells us something going to happen in our lives. And we're wondering how in the world, God, are you going to do this? We laugh, maybe not out loud, but inwardly. Yeah. The laugh classifies that I don't believe that God is able to do this for me. I know what he did for somebody else, but I don't believe, Renee, that God can do it for me. And that's the problem that we have, beloved, is that we limit what God really wants to do. Not that we limit his power, but we limit it through unbelief. So in response to her 
our lamp than our lamp. God speaks these words to Abraham as recorded in Genesis 18 verses 13 and 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything Come on in here this morning. Is anything bring your problem and put it right there in that question? Is anything bring your anxiety and insert it into that question? Is anything that you've got to answer that because you got to face the reality of what it is that you are confronted with right now. You are confronted with something and you said, I don't know how it's going to happen. God would have me to ask you this morning is anything too hard for the Lord? He says at the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life. Watch this now. And Sarah shall have. I know it looks hopeless. I know it doesn't look like a possibility. But I'm telling you that Sarah is going to have a son. Uh, maybe that one wasn't good enough for you. God decided to rescue the nation of Israel from their bondage in Egypt. He led them into the wilderness where he prescribed, he's a dietitian, you know, a, 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 a menu. Mm. And the menu was a miraculous provision of manna. Uh -huh. Are y'all still with me? Go ahead. But you know, good, just like good African Americans, Israel began to grumble and complain because they could not enjoy the variety of food that they had been accustomed to eating in Egypt. That's right. Go ahead, preacher. You know. We used to eat uh, corn mixed with some beans. Other folk just picked up on that, that it was a great, delicious dish. <laughs> and they decided that they gonna put it in a can <laughs> and put it on a shelf. Uh -huh. What we had been eating all along. And they were trying to figure out how in the world them Negroes, I ain't giving them much to eat, but how is it that they keep getting fat? Y'all don't like me this morning. It's because we have a master degree in taking crumbs and making it into a masterpiece. Y'all don't like me this morning. We got a PhD in taking leftovers and feeding everybody in the church. And y'all don't like me today. We, we and make something out of it. We'll take some peas and, and some rice and some gravy. I ain't talking about this lightweight gravy. I'm talking about this heavyweight gravy. And, and we'll feed the whole house. And nobody get up from the table. Hungry everybody. Oh, Y'all don't like me today. Remember, my mama used to take a skillet pan and make what we call skillet bread. Y'all don't like me today. And, and, and boy, when we got through eating, we didn't want nothing else because we were full to the rim. And now if you open up a black restaurant in the community, they get a whiff of it. They, they'll pack it out. You, you can't even get in there because you got to beat them. Can, can, can I get some of them collard greens? <laughs> you used to go buy oxtails real cheap. Now you can't even afford them anymore. Because you can't beat them by. They discovered that what they thought was nothing would turn out to be the best part. Yeah. 
In response to Israel's grumbling, God promised to give this great company a diet of meat for an entire month. If the feeding of the 5,000 in the New Testament seems to be challenging and awe-inspiring, imagine feeding this huge congregation. Moses had the same thoughts and he decided that he would express his concerns to God. Numbers 11 verses 21 and 22 records the words of Moses. Moses said, the people whom I am among our 600,000 men on foot. Yet you have said, he's talking to God, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? Moses said, God, you got to be crazy. How you going to feed all of these people? 600,000 men on for they ain't counting the women and the children. That's just men. And you said you're going to give these folk who are already mad with you, you're going to give them meat for a whole month. I said, I heard your complaint. But I have a response. I have a rebuttal to your complaint. Verse 23, God says, and the Lord says to Moses, has the Lord's arm been shortened? That's a good question for somebody sitting in the pew this morning. You facing that little issue that seems like a mountain to you and God is saying, has my arm been shortened? In other words, am I not in a position to meet your need? Am I not in a position where I can do something about your situation? Cast all of your cares upon me because I care for you. God says to him, he says, now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. Now you won't see. Because what I'm getting ready to do, I'm getting ready to make a believer out of you. Isaiah shows us that God has mercy and power. God does not domineer over us or abuse us, but God loves us has mercy on us even when we are weak, especially when we are in a state of weakness. We are weak, but God is strong. Strong enough to make us alive again, regardless of our human circumstances. The Lord said to Israel, and he said to us this morning, fear thou not. God announces to Israel, that even though they had been up and down in their commitment to him, faithful and then unfaithful, trusting and then untrusting, thankful and then unthankful, most importantly, they have entered into a covenant with God and broken that same covenant, which was the thing that led them into their exile. They needed to know that God was still with them even in times of their turning their backs on him. Amen. Sometimes, beloved, we are just like Israel when it comes to God. Sometimes it's a one-sided love affair. You have been in love with somebody, but they didn't love you. I know the one you got now love you, but I'm talking about before. That's how you got the one you got now because the one before you didn't love you. One-sided 
love affair. Keep looking at me. Don't look the other way. I don't want nobody to get in trouble this morning. Well, you still thinking about her? You still thinking about her? Well, don't, don't go. Don't do it. You won't make the Super Bowl if you do. Stay in here. Stay in here. Focus. God blesses. Then we run. God heals and we fail him. God protects us and we let him down. God lifts us up and we disappoint him. Israel really had no reason for turning their backs on God. So when we look at this text, God gives them some promises and he also utters some declarations. He says the reason why you don't have to be worried and anxious is because I am with you. And I am your God. I'm glad that the Lord is with us today. Yeah. No matter what direction life has you traveling in right now, God is still with you. That's important because if God is on my side, then who can be against me? That's the words of Paul. Paul said, if God be for us, and it's not a question, it's really a rhetorical question in a sense that it does not need an answer because the answer is already in God. God is for us. Since God is for us, I have no need to worry, doubt, or fear. Even when my life is spiraling out of control, God is still on my side. Doesn't abandon me when I go wrong. No, inside he's still right there with me. Still counseling me, still talking to me. Trying to get me to turn around. Somebody should have said amen because when you went astray, when you backslid, when you messed up, God did not forsake you. God stayed with you because he loves you in spite of you. Can I get some help in here today? He promised to be with you because before you and you alone, he proved himself over and over again. Just how much he loves you. How many times? Words of the song, I hear it in my mind. How many times must I prove just how much I love you? How many ways? I, 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 what else can God do to show you that I still love you? How, how much more do you need to see before you realize that can't nobody do me like Jesus? How, how, how much more do you need him to do and to pour into your life? Before you understand that can't nobody do me like Jesus. I, I found out that if I trust him. Uh, he will provide. Why? Because he is your God. For Israel and for us, that's a definitive statement. But the usage of the phrase really is a throwback and a connection to covenant promises. In, in the covenant ceremonies in the Old Testament, God is always the first party. Israel is the second party. God made promises to Israel and Israel made promises to God. Even though Israel changed and acted a fool, played the role of the harlot and rebuke God and went after idols. God says, I'm still your God. I still love you. I never changed. You changed, but I didn't change. And I didn't move. You moved. I'm still who I was before the same who said to you in the beginning that I would love you with a love beyond understanding. Shame one. Protected you. You may have changed, but God says, I never change. 
The New Testament gives us a picture of this. And I shared it last week. Gives us a picture of this in Luke. With the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. Prodigal son comes to his father and says, Father, give me the portion of goods that befalleth me. I don't have time to wait till you transition. I want my inheritance now. In the biblical times, you could get your inheritance while your father was still alive. So his father didn't change words with him. He didn't try to talk him out of his decision. He just simply went to his accountant and said, what is the total summation of my, my estate? And he says, whatever portion of that, it goes to my younger son, give it to him. Just using some McKenzie one on one right now. I can imagine his financial advisor saying to him, Wait, say, listen, you don't want to get that ball on that money. Because if you give him all of that money, he's going to act a fool. Because he's not mature enough to maintain. And grow his investment, he's gonna waste it on riotous living. So he collected his inheritance. Say, I'll be that I'm out of here. Child, I'm going into a far country. I'm gonna have me a good time. You know the thing about good times, they don't last. <laughs> it's all temporary while he was making it rain come on in here come on in here come on in here come on in here don't try to act funny and cute with me today some of y'all been trying to make it rain and still trying to make it rain it ain't raining no more it's drizzling Come on in here. He had friends. Had company. As soon as his money was gone, so did his friends. As long as you pay for everything, you got company. As long as you pay and pick it up the tab after y'all sit down at the table and eat, you got plenty of friends. As long as you keep putting the gas in the car, you got some people that'll ride with you. But as soon as your car breaks down, y'all ain't going to talk back to me today. And I know some of y'all done been in that position. You had folk that would ride wherever you said, let's go to Orlando, let's go to Miami, let's go to Jacksonville, wherever you decided that you wanted to go. You say, you ain't got to worry about Pick up your bag. I got it. I got it. They were willing to run. But as soon as you pull up to the gate, and I had this happen to me while I had this happen to me. I, I had an 85 Cutler Supreme. <laughs> A little music in there too long. Not only the tag running, the trunk was running. Come on in here today. Get up and start hooping himself in a minute. Let me move. <laughs> so I said to some girls that I was hanging with, I said, hey man, y'all wanna ride around and you know, we pick up some spirits. <laughs> I just believe in keeping it real. 
And I says he's trying to get all holy and sanctimonious. Just tell the truth, God has delivered you, and you ought to be glad about that today. So I ain't ashamed to tell my story. So we arrived, and then I'm looking at the leader. I say, man, you don't mind. Your gas was real cheap back in the day. So I said, man, you don't mind. Let's put our little pennies together, and let's put some gas. Oh, man, Doc, you, you, you can drop me off in on, on the corner. I mind you now, in, in 85 colors, I blow cold. But you gotta have some gas. And so when I looked over at my left view, I said, I'm gonna drop these Negroes off. And me and you gonna ride. You ain't got to worry about nothing because you with me. But them two fellas got to get out at the nearest corner. Because as long as you buying, Plenty of company. And the prodigal son discovered that when his money was gone, his friends, so he thought, were gone. Found himself in a very low place. Went from a royal status down to a peasant status. Found himself eating what the hogs were eating. And then something triggered in his mind. I remember where I came from. I messed up. My daddy didn't run me off. I left on my own. He said, how many hired servants of my father? I ain't talking about what my daddy got. I'm talking about the servants who work for my daddy. They, even they have bread enough and to spare. And I perish with her. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back home. I'm not even going to ask for sonship to be restored. I'm going to ask my daddy to just make me one of his hired servants because even the servant is living better than I am right now. But here's the unique thing about God and about that picture of that father in the text is that God is always looking for his lost child to return back to him. And so when the father sees the son coming, he runs to meet him. He said, boy, when you left home, you had a three-piece suit and a Stetson hat and some Stacy Adams on your feet, but now you come back with some raggedy sandals. Your shirt has been torn because it's a representation of what your life was like outside of the auspices of God. And anytime we move away from God, we enter the danger zone. But if we stay with God, uh, God will stay with us. Have I got company here this morning? Yeah, God hadn't changed. We changed. So God said to Israel, and I got to wrap it up because I feel somebody getting nervous. God still with us. In spite of what happens in the United States of America, He's still our God. In spite of how politicians try. To change laws. God is still with us. In spite of what happens in the community, God is still our God. In spite of what happens in your own life, He's still your God. Well, how do you know this, McKenzie? Because in the text He says, I will strengthen you, I will help you. And I will uphold you. For Israel, these three promises summarize God's divine intervention. God has a way of stepping in at the right time. In the nick of time. God says, I will strengthen you. God says, I will help you. And I will uphold you. The truth of the matter is that you can say it this way. 
God has always strengthened us. God has always helped us. And God has always upheld us. And not only that, but God is strengthening somebody right now. Have I got a witness in here? God is helping somebody right now. God is upholding somebody right now. I know your enemies thought it was already over. Can I get a witness in here? But I come to tell you that the God that I serve specializes in stepping in at the right time. You ought to tell somebody that the God that I serve will make a way. Have I got a witness in here? I know they tried to tell you down, but God wouldn't allow it to be so. God said, don't worry, I got your back. All the others walked off and left you, but I'm still with you because I made a promise in my word. No, I'll be with you always. Have I got a witness in here? Ain't he all right? You ought to tell somebody when you see me riding, I'm not riding by myself. You can't see him because he's looking in the natural, but he's sitting right next to me. Everywhere I go, the Lord is with me. I don't worry and I don't fret because God made me a promise. I will strengthen you when you get down and out. I'm still by your side. I'm gonna uphold you. Ain't it alright? Let them talk. Let them talk about you as much as you please. But the thing I've learned when you talk, God steps in. He keeps on lifting me up. And now I know. Shut my head. Be lifted up above my enemies. All around me, them liberals wondering how I got here. But the Lord was on my side. Ain't it alright? Can you shout it? I'm through with y'all. I gotta get out of here. Go Kansas the city chiefs. Ain't it alright? Shout it! Won't he make a way? He's got power. 
We want to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. There'll be one this morning who wants to come surrender their life to Christ. God is our all in all. Even when we stray away, God does not stray away from us. Will there be one today? into the pool. When the angel shows up and trouble the water, somebody always gets there ahead of me. Jesus said, I'm not asking you about your past experience. I'm asking you, do you want to be made whole right now? And that's what he's doing right now. He's asking somebody in this room, do you want to be made whole now? I'm not interested in what happened before. I want to know, do you want to be made whole now? Because I'm, the one who is able to bring your deliverance about is here now. Come on, y'all. I don't want to talk to you now. So you don't need to go looking and waiting on the angel to show up. Because the one who is able is already here. Sometimes God has to do us just like Jesus did the man. Because the man never asked to be here. Jesus just healed him. Because he was caught up in his hangups that he couldn't recognize that Jesus was in front of him. Derek and I were talking last night and I tried to explain it to him and I said, Derek, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just one of those manifestations that's going on. God is doing something right now. I said, I keep seeing it happening. I don't know about you, but I don't want him to show up and I be absent. Wherever he is, that's where I want to be. Because he 
healing is where he is. Deliverance is where he is. There I go again. Let me, let me put the bricks on. show up just to show up. We, we make guest appearances. God is not in the business of guest appearances. Whenever the Holy Spirit walks in and, and you feel a heavy covering of the Holy Spirit, that's because he has an agenda. He has an assignment. And sometimes we are so accustomed and so busy and programmed that we miss what God is doing in that moment. We miss it. Because we're so focused on the end of the service that we can't enjoy the service. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? God is talking. Whether you ready or not, God is going to change some things. Whether you want to try to hold on, God is going to shake it up. In fact, he's already shaking it. The shaking has already started. Eyes have been seen. Years have I heard the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. Oh, man. You need a tiny little hope if you would please raise your hand. One of our ushers will bring you a tiny little hope. You can give. If you give a fine or sale, desire to pay the credit card or debit card, go to classroom two on your right, and someone from our finance ministry will receive you. Let me just say this money is no problem for God. I'm speaking to somebody today. Money is no problem for God. The problem that we have is trusting God. Trusting. And watch him make a way out of nowhere. Watch him pour more into you than you ever thought would happen. Because this is a walk of faith. Yes, sir. It's not a walk of where you see it and then you walk. You got to believe it and, and walk as you believe. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Father, we thank you for these gifts today. Bless every home, bless every family. It is my sincere prayer, oh God, that no one would suffer one or lack as a result of their giving on today. Help us to trust you, God, with that which you have entrusted to our care. You told us in the word, in your word, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you 
the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing and you shall not have room enough to receive. Bless, O oh God. You promised to rebuke the devourer for our sake, that our vines would not cast forth fruit before time. Somebody's been waiting on you a long time, God. Give them a reminder that you have not forgotten about them. Drop a blessing, financial blessing, into their life this week. Just as a reminder that I'm still with you. Haven't forgotten you. But I got something for you that your enemies can't handle right now. <coughs> Bless, O oh God. Bless, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand, starting with the overflow and the power. benediction and keeps going. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us to be a part of this worship experience. Now, God, as we depart from this place, but never your presence, Go before us, behind us, above us, beneath us, and catch us should we fall. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. And it is amen. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week.